Don't waste your attempt, your time, and your money by showing up for the CPC exam with the wrong materials. There are guidelines about what you can and cannot bring to the exam. And there's differences between what you are allowed to take to an in-person exam versus the online remote proctored exam. So you don't wanna get so tripped up on the details that you wind up getting turned away because you don't have the right materials. But don't worry, because in this video, I'm going to cover what you can and cannot bring to the exam. We're going to look at the definitive resource from the AEPC, which I will link below. I'm going to break it all down for you. I'm Victoria. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, and content creator. And on my channel, I provide tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you be successful in your medical coding career. By the way, today's video is sponsored by Preppy, but more on them in a little bit. Now there is posted published guidance from the AAPC about what is permitted for the CPC exam and all of the exams that they have. So don't always necessarily go by what your instructor says or even what I say, verify back to that definitive source, the AAPC and what they tell you in the information they're providing you for the exam, what you can and cannot bring. For example, the date that I'm recording this in May of 2023, you are allowed only to take paper books, but that has been predicted to change in the future. So verify that information as well. I'm gonna link below where you can find the approved resources link so that you can verify what is going to be allowed for your exam on the day that you are taking it. But if you're not at that point yet and you still need some training, let me tell you about my free career masterclass that you can sign up for at medicalcodingmasterclass.com. There you'll find out everything you wanna know about this career, including things like why the CPC exam is the top credential that employers are looking for and things like your job outlook and salary expectations. It's gonna give you the full roadmap of how do you go from someone who has no experience in healthcare to someone who is job ready as a medical biller and coder. And that roadmap is gonna lead you to Preppy, which is the training program that I endorse. Definitely check it out, medicalcodingmasterclass.com. So this is the PDF document that you're going to want to see. It is the examinee instructions, and this covers all of AAPC's exams. So when you look at it, you might get confused because there's other things listed on there that can be brought to other exams, but can't be brought to the CPC exam. And it's really important to differentiate what you are looking at. Some exams do allow reference materials that are not allowed for the CPC exam. And it also, it's important to note that this is for US-based testing. So if you are testing outside of the United States, you may have different regulations. Check AAPC Global for what you are and are not allowed to bring, because from what I understand, certain areas, they provide the books for you. You do not have to bring your own books. So let's start with the in-person exams. There is a general note there saying that you should bring your photo ID, number two pencils, an eraser, a calculator, and your coding books and references. Now, years ago, they used to supply the pencils. They used to ship a pack of sharpened pencils in with all of the exams. They stopped doing that a while ago, which actually tripped me up one time because I showed up for my exam, assuming there would be pencils there. And in fact, there were not. So I had to scramble and borrow some from some of my coding friends. However, through 2023, exams are still proctored by the local chapters. So some of the local chapters may bring you supplies like pencils or even earplugs. Through 2023, for those in-person exams, your proctors may email you some things that you are allowed to bring to the exam. They may say, hey, it's a little chilly, bring a sweatshirt. If you're bringing a snack, don't bring you know, salmon or something that might have a strong smell to it. So be on the lookout for those emails as well. Now, when you're looking at the approved references on the sheet, you have to double check and make sure if you are checking the list for the in-person exams or the online remote proctor, because there's a big difference between those two. So look at the one that says in person. Now the AAPC has dozens of certifications, not just the CPC. So they will have a box that just lists all of the references for the exam. Each reference is numbered one, two, three, four, five. And if you follow to the CPC exam, it says you are allowed to bring references one, two, and three. Reference one is your CPT book. So this is the AMA edition. It has to be the AMA edition. You can't get one from Optum or any different publisher. It has to be the AMA edition. Um, the other book that you need, number two, is your choice of ICD-10-CM. So it doesn't have to be the AEPC version. It's whatever version you like. If you like Box, if you like Optum, if you like TCI, you could use those versions instead. 
I personally think the AAPC version is good for the exam because um, they make the exam. So they put some little graphs and charts in there that will help you out while you're taking your exam. The third thing you are allowed to bring is a HCPCS manual. You can bring again any version of the HCPCS manual that you like. It does not have to be this exact edition. The one that does have to be the exact edition is the AMA version of the CPT manual. Now, if you'll notice, reference nine is a medical dictionary, but that's not listed as one of the allowed references for the CPC exam. It's allowed for other certification exams, that's why it's on the list, but it is not listed as an approved reference for the CPC exam, so you are not permitted to bring a medical dictionary to the CPC exam. Now, a lot of people have questions on notes in their books, and here's exactly what it says on what is allowed as far as notes in your books. Handwritten notes are acceptable in the coding books only if they pertain to daily coding activities. Long passages of information are not permitted on the blank pages. Questions from the study guides, questions from the practice exams, questions from the exam itself are prohibited. Well, you might think, how am I gonna get questions from the exam itself? Well, let's say you're taking the exam, you're thinking, oh gosh, I'm not gonna pass this. What I'll do is I'll just take all of the questions on the exam and write them in the blank pages of my books, and then I'll find out what the answers are, take the exam again, you cannot do that. You, you will be in a huge ethics violation if you do. You also cannot alter, white out, paint, or print over any pages within the code book, such as marketing pages, table of contents, or reference pages. That is not allowed. You cannot supplement information that way. What they mean by that is this is a marketing page. It's advertising Codify. I cannot just go ahead and get a big slab of white paint or white out and white over this and write in my special notes that I've developed. You are permitted to write notes. There are blank pages specifically for writing notes, so you can write them in there. There's lots of territory, but again, you can't just write your entire study guide in here. You can't write practice exam questions in here. You can't take paragraphs from another book and write them in your notes. As far as book tabs, you can use these tabs. There are very nice ones that you can purchase that are on Etsy, for example. The official statement is tabs may be inserted, taped, pasted, glued, or stapled in the manual, so long as the obvious intent is to earmark the page with words or numbers, not to supplement information in the book. So you can't use sticky notes, for example, as tabs and write notes on the sticky notes. You can't have any additional papers in your book and nothing else to add in additional pages in your book. And of course, I have a lot of people that will ask me, hey, Victoria, I have this year's book, but I'm not testing until next year, or I have last year's book. Can I still use this? So you are permitted to use the current calendar year's book or the prior calendar year book. You can't go further than one prior calendar year back. Now, ICD-10-CM codes are updated October 1st of every year, but that doesn't mean the exam is updated. The exam is updated January 1 of every year, so you actually can't use your next year's code books either. So let's say I'm testing in November of 2023, and I have my 2024 book because I got it because those codes for ICD-10 are already in effect. You can't take that to the exam, and actually you probably wouldn't even want to, because again, that exam won't be updated until January 1. So all of those new codes won't even be represented in the exam. So again, you can take the current calendar year's books or the prior calendar year's books, but not further that back or the next calendar year. So if you're testing in 2024, you have to take 2024 books. You can't take 2025 books, or you could take your 2023 books. Now let's move on to the online remote proctored exam. What are we permitted to take there? So again, there's that huge reference list and we have certain numbers that we're allowed to take. Under the references, it says you can take one, two, or four. Number one, again, is same thing. AMA edition of the CPT manual, whatever version of ICD-10 you'd like and whatever version of HCPCS you like, either the current calendar year or the prior calendar year. For the online remote exam, you are not allowed though to take those printed copies of the ICD-10-CM guidelines. Under the ICD-10 version of the in-person, you were allowed to print them out and take them with. However, if there's any guideline updates that will be reflected in the exam, they will embed that into the exam itself for the, the application that you use to take the online exam. 
Basically, you can't take any paper, writing materials, anything to the online exam. You cannot take blank paper for scratch paper, pencils. You can't take pens. You can't take a whiteboard. They used to permit the whiteboard, but now they have a little notes application that's embedded in there that you can use to basically have scratch paper, but digitally. Even your calculator, they have a digital calculator embedded in the exam application, so you're not permitted to take a calculator to the online exam. Now, if you need tips on how to navigate through those notes and do things like the process of elimination, I will link below a video where I have some details on how you can accomplish that. On the left of the approved references manual, there's a couple other things it says you have to take with you for the online exam. First of all is an external webcam. So for example, I have my laptop here on the very top of the monitor. It's got an embedded webcam, but you cannot use that. Reason being is you're going to need the external webcam to sweep around and show what's in your room. So you're gonna to need to take your external webcam, plug that in, and this tripod I have, uh, I have a better one that has an extendable stick that I recommend. I'll link that below in case you wanna purchase that one. But it's better to have that because you're gonna to want to place the webcam on your desk. You're also going to need to move it to sweep around. So for example, they're going to want you to do like a 360 of the room. They're gonna to wanna to chuck under your desk, even up to the ceiling, just to make sure you don't have hidden cameras, people in the room, recording devices, anything like that. They're even going to check the applications on your computer, your task manager basically, to make sure that you don't have a second monitor hooked up, that you don't have any other additional applications running because they need to protect the integrity of the exam. If the exam isn't worth anything because people are cheating their way through it, then as a reflection, our credentials aren't worth anything. And the webcam needs to be positioned in such a way that they can see everything you're doing. They can see where your hands are, they can see what you're doing in your books, and they can make sure that you don't have any additional references that have been picked up and put on your table and that you're using to cheat the exam. You can use a desktop or a laptop computer, but it does need to pass certain requirements. So check, make sure that you have the right operating systems, speed, etc., to be successful for the online remote proctored exam. You also need your government issued ID to verify that you are the correct person taking the exam and you are allowed to have a drink on your desk. For the online exam, you are just allowed a drink, no snacks. Now, because you're not allowed any paper or writing instruments, you may have trouble keeping track of what page you're on as you're flipping through your books. One tip I can provide is since you are allowed tabs for your books, what I found helpful was just having an additional tab that's either blank or maybe you write on it, you know, here's my spot or spot or put a little dot on it, whatever kind of character you wanna put on and just use that blank tab to mark your page. So maybe you wanna put it up top there and that will be essentially used as your bookmark. You are permitted to take a short break if needed for the exam, but the timer does not stop and you'll need to check in again and probably do another sweep after you've returned from your break if you're leaving your room and coming back. Here's the requirements that they lay out for the online remote proctored. It says you must be alone in the room throughout the exam. You must have a clear desk and workspace. You will be required to perform a 360 degree room and desk pan using your webcam. Again, 360 degrees the whole way around. You must show the area under your desk and under your keyboard, you must also show the ceiling of your room. Your computer must be connected to a power source. You may not use your phone or smartwatch during the exam. You are not allowed to use more than one monitor during the exam. Your webcam speakers, screen share, and microphone must remain on through the exam. But in the end, the key to success on the CPC exam is not just about what you're bringing to you with the exam, but how well you've prepared. And that's why I recommend training programs like Preppy, which you can find out more about at medicalcodingmasterclass.com. But if you need some additional review to prepare for the CPC exam, I have a whole playlist of videos that you can check out right here to help you out. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I wish you lots of luck on your CPC exam. And as always, keep on coding on.